Uh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, new Looking Ahead uh, talking, Talks meeting. I am Chiara Ledda, I'm from Italy and today I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Adam Ziff uh, from Poland, who is the chairman of uh, Project PL, a foundation uh, he brought to life a couple of months ago to try to help families and the whole society in finding uh, the right answer to the very demanding and changing social environment in his country. Also as a businessman engaged uh, in other projects uh, and father of four children, he constantly tries uh, to find a balance between family and work life. This, before passing the floor to him, let me remind you that uh, he will speak uh, for 15 minutes and then you are free to, interv uh, to intervene and ask any question you have, even better by activating your camera so we can see each other and it's more, uh, <laughs> more, more better, better. I won't take any more time. I immediately pass the word uh, to the floor to Adam. Curious to know what he has to tell us. Adam, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Chiara. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, I'm really, I'm really happy to to be hosted here, and I will say some some words about my uh, my story and how did I came to uh, to uh, to uh, starting a think tank uh, a couple of months ago. So I'm 42 years old. I come from a small city, a uh, small town in central Poland, where I lived until I was 19. Then I moved to Krakow, uh, which is uh, second biggest city in, in Poland. I came there for studies. I studied economics at the Krakow University of Economics. Uh, I was I specialized in uh, international relations, international business, and uh, this this international aspects were always very uh, very close to my to, to me. So I always wanted to uh, I learn I liked learning languages. I like international uh, atmosphere. So this is why I chose um, I chose this direction in my. Uh, in my studies, uh, and also I, I chose economics because, it, well, when I was probably 19, I didn't really know what what it is. But it, at that time, it was quite popular in Poland to study economics. But I really liked it, and 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 I have to say, economics became one of my passions, and uh, and then uh, I still like read economics, and I have a little dream to do maybe if my my life will allow me to do a PhD, maybe in this uh, in this um, in this. Uh, um, uh, specialization. So uh, after studies, it was uh, and also also actually during studies, I did already a lot of uh, international. Um, mm, uh, let's say international. I I tried to live in an international uh, environment. So I studied one year in Germany. I took some uh, some experiences abroad as well as much as I could actually. And then when I finished, uh, when I was going to the end of my studies, I was looking for a job in the in an international international environment. Uh, I actually founded my, my own uh, trading company, which was, um, let's say, which was connecting uh, uh, connected countries. So I was traveling a lot and uh, I, I, I was uh, cooperating with a French company and selling their products in, uh, in some markets of Eastern Europe. Uh, and uh, mm, after three years, I started another company in sporting goods uh, with my uh, with my colleague from studies. Uh, uh, and uh, so both businesses I'm continuing until now. So there are, let's say, two trading companies uh, where I am shareholder. And I have to say in uh, in both of these businesses, I was very lucky because um, because uh, well, both, uh, you know, both, for example, the first business is uh, we're we are selling uh, window cover uh, products for window coverings. And uh, Poland is the biggest manufacturer of windows in Europe. And Poland is the biggest producer of window coverings in Europe. And, you know, I couldn't know that back 20 years ago that I will be in such a such a, a industry. So I was I was really lucky to be in this industry and could um, uh, could uh, take advantage of that. And the same situation is with the sporting goods. Uh, which also, you know, 16 or 17 years ago, when we were, when we were starting this business with my friend, we also couldn't know how it will develop. And and so I just want to say I'm using this that um, you know I'm I had a lot of luck. Uh, in economics, you, you you call it contingency, or Christians we we also call it providence. But I want to say it was. Um, um, 
I came to a certain very very relatively fast to certain stability with this uh, with these activities, and also because I the external situation was quite positive and positive for me. Uh, one year after uh, one, after one year after my studies, I met my current wife uh, Eva. Uh, we married quite quickly after one year. We married, and after nine months, uh, we had first uh, first child. And within the next eight years, we had a child in every two or three years. So we'll end up after eight years quite fast. We'll end up with a quite big uh, team. Um, with one one son and three daughters, um, so this was a very, as you can imagine, it was quite uh, it was quite uh, quite busy time for us. Uh, so um, in this uh, in um, mm, I think it's uh, uh, in my life I always try to be quite active, and um, of course doing two businesses and having quite a uh, quite a big family it was uh, uh, it was big, a bit of a challenge uh, for us but I always try to find other activities and uh, four years ago I um, I, I joined the association uh, Klub Jagiellonski uh, but already back then I was thinking about um, having something well Maybe I didn't think to have my own think tank at that time, but I was thinking I had a project in my uh, I, I, in my head. The idea was um, to connect to to uh, see the situation of families because myself I was you know in a situation where I had to spend my time or uh, on, on the family having uh, four kids, uh, wife, and and all this. Uh, uh, let's say problems you have as a young person uh, around it, and uh, and still being uh, being quite active in business. And I was thinking that probably there's a lot of people having similar situation. But I was also I uh, wanted to do something something more. And and uh, my my membership in this uh, association Klub was a uh, was a kind of. Um, um, uh, Showing my yes, my my extra. Um, I wanted to spend more uh, time on on this, and uh, mm, after a couple of years, I uh, came to a, I majored in this decision to start my own think tank. It was not a. It was quite a, a long process. I I have to say it's not something I I did. Uh, I decided very quickly. It was. Uh, something I also discuss, of course, with, with my family. And the think tank is based on this, what, uh, what, what was already said by Chiara, that uh, for me, uh, so this topic of family uh, being the foundation of economic uh, system uh, to uh, get, into, get deeper into uh, in, my, uh, in my think tank. And uh, I think you know when we um, think about these two things, so family and and and, eco and economy or or uh, si the economic system, uh, we I think everyone um, everyone understands that this is very important, and both things are very important for us. That the family is very important, um, and there's not many people who say you know we shouldn't have families or or it's a it's a general. Thing that I think most of us agree, and then there is also uh, economics. We all agree that it's important to have progress. It's important to 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 have better to live in a better world, in a better system, to have better healthcare. But in my, um, mm, mm, I get a feeling that we agree on these two things, but we agree on them separately. We don't put them. We very seldom, seldomly put them together. We don't see that one depends on on the other, and the other depends on on on, on the on the first one. So this is uh, something which uh, I will try to uh, I will try to uh, focus on in our think tank in our uh, foundation. Um, we are now, as Kiara said, we are four months old. So this is a still starting process. But already there is some certain energy into it. There is uh, 
there is the we we are we created a web page we are already active on social media we're active in some articles we are building the team of people around us i already had pandemic is also not making this easier but i met a couple, a couple of meetings to to uh to create certain energy around it environment around it um i also we are now at the moment of uh, translating the web page so maybe if somebody's interested i will be able to send you the the web page uh, and you will be uh, also able to see what are our uh, what are what are our uh, achievements until now uh, so now i would like to i still have 5 minutes i would like to show you this being said my short story how did i came from from um, in my life to this uh, project of uh, of the foundation of the think tank i would like to show you a little presentation uh, which um, mm, so there are like you know there are these three things in my in my life right now so of course family uh, uh business uh, and 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 the think tank and you know i when i was thinking about it they are actually based on you know i i, I was thinking how can i put these things together and they're based on the three pillars um uh, so the first rule the first rule i'm uh, uh -huh, i cannot know okay the first rule i'm trying to um, to follow, to put this together, is this rule of uh, family first. Uh, so whatever I'm, I'm doing now, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to put the focus that my family uh, should be. I should consider the consequences for my family, and that was not always the case. You know, because you can imagine, uh, uh, with so many kids in such a short time and uh, and quite active life, I wasn't always. Uh, the great father and I always, wasn't always there when I was needed because I was traveling or, you know, I had, I had times, I had years when I traveled 150 days a year. And, uh, you know, when my wife once told me uh, some months ago uh, that, uh, that she was thinking about it, that every time when we had a kid in hospital and, you know, we never had a serious things, but there were like this medium, let's say medium problems. And, you know, I, I, I actually wasn't never there because I always was either in China or in Estonia or somewhere. And, you know, she had to then ask her brother-in-law, brother to stay with the kids and go to the hospital or whatever. So, you know, this is, of course, um, this was, of course, challenges time. So, so I came to this, to this, um, to this moment that I, I said, okay, family first. And, uh, and actually pandemic for us in this situation is a blessing that I, it's, a, it's the first time in my life in my family life and i'm staying now for almost uh, a year at home and i can see a lot of things the second thing which i'm also trying to follow since certain um, certain time is I'm, I'm i'm choosing evolution instead of revolution because a lot of projects i did and a lot of ideas i had also in business but also this extra idea what i said before about joining some some ngos or whatever they were did in a kind of a revolution way it's, it was like a very fast, I said, oh, this is a great idea. I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't even, even decently talk with myself about it. I just, I just did them. And I, I came to the, to the conclusion, you know, the things, when you make them gradually, when you, when you do the process like the, the, the think tank is a process of actually four years of, of, of thinking about it. What should I, should I do it? How should I do it? Uh, then you do it in, a, in my opinion, in a better way. And for me, that works. So work, so I let the things mature in myself and mature in my family and mature with me and my wife. Uh, and the last thing, you know, when you keep this uh, family, uh, the, the, the family on the right place, and when you do it in a gradual way, you still have to keep your wild heart. You still have to follow your dreams because when you, when you, when you allow that these things will kind of tame you, in this negative way, you might lose certain opportunities. And you know, I already see that that if you do it in the right way, you still can follow your uh, your ideas, which sometimes you might think they are too egoistic, or or they are just following your way and not you don't take others into this into this uh, trip. When you do it in the right way, you can I think um, you just have to still do it. And you know, the, the now when I see the first four months of the foundation and the uh, fruits and uh, which already the some i can see in the people around me i think this is worth to to follow your your ideas so this is uh, all from my side and um, i'm giving back um, 
floor to Chiara and uh, waiting for questions. Thank you so much, Adam, for your uh, really stimulating uh, uh, speak and uh, for uh, sharing with us uh, your story. And uh, I, I, I saw in the chat that there is already a question. And uh, I don't know, I will, I will read it to you so maybe <laughs> you can answer. There is, uh, I, I can't pronounce it in the name, so I will read <laughs> the, the question. It's interesting that divorce rate in Poland is only 1.7 per 1,000 marriages, while 14.9 divorce per 1,000 marriages in US, in US in, the la in the latest survey. What would be the reason how people of Poland become so strong in marriage relationship? What kind of suggestion you may have to other countries which are so high, high rates of divorce? Yes. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you for this question. Well, I think this is. Uh, uh, I think this rate, unfortunately, uh, is growing very fast. Unfortunately, and we are now uh, getting very fast to the European average. Uh, I think I don't know if this statistic is is this a person per per marriage or this is per person because there are different ways of putting statistics. Um, so unfortunately, this rate is growing, uh, growing very fast. So the the situation of the family is not uh, very uh, looking very bright at the moment. But anyway, I think we are still in the better situation than many different many Western countries. And the reason for it is, uh, in my opinion, is still uh, uh, we continue to be relatively more traditional than in many uh, uh, other cultures. Uh, with also with the with the church uh, having here um, a, a role, being a, a, a keeping this traditional uh, way of um, way of life, which is also have certain risks because uh, because uh, the culture is changing dramatically, and if there is no real and uh, the real understanding and the deep understanding why we do uh, certain uh, certain things and why we are uh, why we want to why we why we really want to be in the marriage and what is the real role of the marriage from other than just traditional which mean for me traditional means not always very conscious it's sometimes you know it's sometimes we do it because we do it and we don't really realize why we do it i think there is a uh, there is a lot of still space to improve, and um, so I don't know if I really replied uh, to this question because, of course, maybe we are still better off than than US, but this is changing dramatically in the in the other direction, and and uh, I think we have he, here now we have to act actually because if we just uh, there is not something that we already found the solution, and we are. We are better off in this aspect than other other cultures, other countries. Let's say not cultures may be the same, but other 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 countries. But the, the, actually, the problem is growing a lot, and I think now is the time to to do to to start to do things, maybe to stop certain degradation of the of the family and the marriage. And this is also something I'm really uh, in, interesting to do uh, in the in the think tank. Now. I don't know if someone else wants to make some questions or uh, also opening the camera so we can see each other. I think there was uh, Remy that wanted to say something. Remy, do you yes. want to? Thank you, Chiara. Uh, hi, Adam. I hi. was wondering if you can elaborate a bit more on if ever there is a growing pressure you feel from 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 work or the economy on on families i mean do, do people feel that starting a family with two or three children is difficult if one has a job you know is 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 work considered or felt like a bit of a barrier to have to have the number of children that people usually want just wondering because I feel it's it's it it can be the case sometimes in uh, in maybe in Europe I don't know yeah so there was thank you Remy for this question uh, there was um, there was some interesting study some years ago in Poland which was made uh, on uh, Polish women 
uh, living in Polish families, Polish marriages in England. Uh, in, after we joined the European Union, there was a huge exodus of Polish uh, people from all classes, all working classes to England, to UK and Ireland as well, um, which was, the, I think, they were the two countries, first countries which allowed uh, legal work of Polish people in the European Union. It was, I think, at the max, it was, it was like two million people in, uh, in these, on the islands. So that, so that means you could already do a study and you could, uh, you could elaborate on certain things. And the interesting, uh, the interesting uh, takeout from the studies was that the, the, the Polish uh, women in, uh, in uh, England had quite big families two, three, three uh, children, uh, uh, definitely bigger than in Poland because we are at the level, we are below the, uh, the, uh, the, the level that uh, the society is renewing below uh, two. So, uh, so the, 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 the standard family in Poland is uh, two plus one and, or two plus one and a half. So this is the, this is the standard family in Poland. So we are in a, and, I, and this study showed, going back to your question, Remy, that, uh, that this is uh, definitely a, an issue. So if there is, a, if there is a, a better economic situation, but also institutional situation, it's not only econ economic situation, but institutional situation. So better healthcare, uh, better environment, but this environment, this kind of economic environment, uh, I would say, the socioeconomic environment is better, the, the, the same person who lives in, a, in this bad environment is more willing to start a family. I mean, by family, not just marrying a, a, another gender, but also having children than in Poland. So there is a definitely an issue. And this is a definitely something we, we have to address. I don't okay, thanks. And uh, now I think uh, there was also, I saw that Relof, uh, I hope I pronounced it with the name, Open it, uh, his camera, so maybe you wanted to say something. Please, if, if I can. Um, ah. Thank you, Adam, for your, for your small talk. Um, uh, I was wondering, because you mentioned that you had, uh, since uh, the COVID situation, you, you had the ability or you were actually forced to uh, stay at home uh, with your family. Um, and this is something, of course, many people have experienced, but um, it, it might not be an answer. It might be a question that you cannot answer very easily because there's no data on it uh, yet. But um, in the Netherlands, I've heard some people say, "Well, uh, this is not just a burden, but uh, it, it gives a lot of uh, tension uh, to stay at home with the family." And so it isn't viewed as something positive. But you gave it a very positive uh, feeling uh, when you told us about it. Do you do you think that in Poland people would say that uh, having to stay with your family at home? is not as uh, difficult or it's just you know uh, also nice to to uh, is, is a well it, is, it isn't such a big big deal or it is nice to 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 be at home with your family how do you feel about this well i i i definitely hope that people find it positive you know you have always in these situations two sides of the problem so first is uh, that definitely I think the biggest issue is with fathers, and it's probably not only Polish thing, but the fathers are always, oh, sorry for the word, but very often missing in the family, missing by uh, physically missing, like I also did uh, many years in my, in my life, but also missing with your mind, because you have your plans, you have your work, you have your, you know, your, and, and this is, uh, I, you know, my, my feeling and my, what I see on the streets, is that I never seen I've never seen so many men with the children, you know, I'm on the playground, on the street, and you know, m m I am for sure an example of a person who spends ten times more time with children than I did a year ago. Um, and then this is this positive uh, positive side, and I hope this might change uh, a certain attitude. And this is something which the fathers will see that is important to be with the family. Then of course you have the second side of uh, of people who who will tell you that you know you have uh, you have because of the because of the situation you have problems in, in the houses you have uh, you have violence you have many other things and of course this is for sure also happening in Poland to which the extent as you said I don't have uh, exact numbers there were some studies uh, I, I I saw last week uh, made. So for sure, this is also an issue. But you know, in my understanding, this uh, this might be a more positive thing than a negative thing. And if you ask me if I understood well by the approach uh, from people, if they find it more positive or 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 
or negative it's, it's of course a very difficult question but uh, let's say like this i hope especially fathers will find advantages and they will try to change their life uh, in the future because of this pandemic and and try to find more time for the family because they will they maybe will see the advantages of this which are as we know this is already being studied for many years is very very positive for for children if the father uh, is with the family i don't know if i answered your question you should it thank you thank you it's okay. uh, good, good to hear so now we have uh, a space for the last question that uh, maybe I think that Andy wanted uh, to ask something. Andy, if you want to speak. Okay, uh, I want to thank Mr. Adams for his contributions and I would like him to share more experiences on the, on the issue around youth development in Poland and the welfare status of youth in Poland. Uh, what are the welfare schemes available uh, for youth through government interventions. Uh, the Europe uh, is part of the Europe generally. Can you throw some light on that for us to understand some more? Thank you. Uh, so the, the question is about youth development or? Yes, youth development. And then uh, the welfare packages for youth. You know, development and welfare, how does the government of Poland cater for its uh, youth? Now, what is the youth population? What is the demography around youth in Poland? And how are they surviving? Their work life, their study life, and all of it. Yes. So, uh, if I, uh, so, so uh, the demographic uh, is quite similar to, uh, to uh, let's say, standard uh, European country. So we have very uh, aging uh, demography with a growing number of people uh, 65 plus. Uh, and then, and unfortunately, uh, with a very low uh, fertility rate. So we are in uh, one of the worst countries in in uh, in Europe, actually. And then this is, of course, an issue. And uh, today, uh, uh, of course, one of the challenges for for countries like Poland is first uh, the the generational uh, uh, the generational um connection and gener generational um substitution sorry Go on. yes generation substitution because you know the the the, the society is aging and this is uh, one of the reasons of course of the very uh, of the big uh, discussion in politics uh, how the system should should work so in my uh, uh, in my understanding, we are in front of a, of a needed changes uh, in this uh, in this uh, respect, and uh, I don't think we have solutions because this is um, it's not a mere uh, question of of public policy of politicians being able to change something. It's a, it's a cultural thing. It's a it's a way of life. It's a it's a model which is based on uh, on not uh, taking responsibility, in my opinion. And this is a uh, um, it's a huge um, it's a huge playground uh, where we we uh, as parents and uh, we as members of society have to uh, have to try to uh, create the or or uh, help to create a culture of responsibility. You know, when I look at my children and my son now is 15 year old uh, and he uh, lived for sure in different uh, situations than I lived when I was born in 78, we still were, uh, the Poland was still a communist country, but even it doesn't matter if it was a communist country, but the culture was different. Um, you know, I, 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 I thought different way. I, was, I had a different approach to responsibility and this is something I'm, I'm seeing is a is a very challenges for us. If uh, the next generations will be willing to take responsibility, because family is for most responsibility. Of course, it takes gives a lot of uh, reward and gives a lot of. But without this approach to an openness to responsibility, it's very difficult to to start family. So thank you so much, okay. Adam, for your answers. Uh, really. Clear. Thank you. 
And now we have reached uh, the end of our time, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, thanks uh, really much for your participation. Thank you really much, Adam, and to everyone. And I hope to see you here for the next session that I remember to you that is in, in the 13th of January. So I really want to wish you a happy Christmas and a happy new year. And uh, I hope you will pass uh, great uh,